Gentlemen, what's on your minds? Yeah, big up to you, big up. I just want to say quickly, you know, yeah, well, a, a lot of those points on Bamiyang, I mean, you can say what you want. I didn't want Bamiyang. If you, if you told me in May, Matt, do you want Bamiyang? I'd say, what the fuck are you on about? But he's right to the point that, yes, we must get him on a short-term deal. It's nothing for the long term. But if there's anyone to turn around Aubameyang, it's Thomas Tuchel. Thomas Tuchel had the best season with Aubameyang. I think Arsenal, yeah, he didn't really like Arteta. He didn't really like the style of play. So he went to Barcelona to find a new home. Barcelona, he scored eight goals in, in three, four games. He's done decent. And I think he can have a return back at Chelsea. There's no one out better than Thomas Tuchel to transform him. So I think that's it. And on Bowie, I mean, I don't want anyone here who was disrespecting Todd Bowie. Bowie has came in in one and a half months and absolutely demolished every other team and signed class players. Every single team would want Chelsea players right now. Every team wants Sterling. Every team wants Koulibaly. Every team wants Kukurella. And we're not even done. We're halfway. We're still signing three more players. So Todd Bohus came in. I agree that I think he's a bit, I wouldn't say lost, but I think he's a bit confused because he doesn't have a lot of support around him. So it's individual taking it time by time. But imagine us now without any director of football or any support behind us. Look at the future and imagine next season when we've got director football, we've got support around us, how much we would proceed. And I think Chelsea, are here to, we're not going anywhere. People say we're going to go in League 3, League 4. We're here to win more trophies. We're here to get more big, big, bigger players. And I think Arsenal as well maybe can get bigger, but they're not ever going to get close to Chelsea. They're never as big as Chelsea. And at this season, you guys finishing, what, fifth or sixth? And we are definitely finished top four. I've already said that. Easily top four. We've already made top four in my eyes. Okay. Um, Aubameyang did have his two best seasons with Thomas Tuchel, but how does that translate to Chelsea? Because none of the Chelsea attackers have had their best seasons with Thomas well, Tuchel. Well, these aren't his players. Sorry. Sorry. I, it's, it's actually a good point, but I think, you know, these players are horrible. These are Frank Lampard, as I call them, fat Frank players. You know, these aren't his players. His players, he's turned around. Look at the players he's came in and he's turned around. He's, he's transformed a lot of players. I think the argument is a good argument that he hasn't transformed a lot of attackers, but the players that he identifically wants, look at the players he's turning. Sterling, Aubameyang and possibly he wanted Usman Dembele, right? He wanted to recreate that Dortmund attack where you have some skillful wingers and then a guy who can finish. You guys, you can't see it. You can't sit here and say Kai Havertz is a, is a goal scorer. Kai Havertz and Werner, these guys are shocking. Paul Sitch. Like, our whole attack is rubbish. And we have our best attacker is Mason Mount, who is a midfielder. So I agree, our attack is, is the worst attack in the top, top six. I think United have a better top, top of attacker than us. But I think if there's anyone to turn around, it's previous managers, players. And two shows a player who can transform players. We've seen it with these players. At, at this age, do you feel uh, do you feel like Aubameyang is, is going to be useful to you guys? Or because in my opinion, what do your what do your strikers do at Chelsea? Do they just sit in the do they just sit around the box waiting for chances? Or do they are they part of the whole attack? I'll tell you right now, nothing. I can't sit and tell you what Habits does. He doesn't do anything. Uh, if you say anything. We need an attacker to come in and just literally tap the ball in. Havertz, if, if you should, if you sit here and tell me what's Havertz's best, uh, best uh, you know, f uh, con or floor, whatever, his best thing he does is he can head at the ball at times, but he can't dribble, he can't shoot. He's not an attacker. Aubameyang will not saw us for five, six years on. He'll kind of sort us for a season or two. It's nothing to look. I personally have always said I want a, an attacker who's experienced, who's cheap. I don't mind Aubameyang, Zaha, Depay. I don't really care who it is, right? but I want someone who's, who's experienced and he's cheap. Then when we get a football director, we get a better scout system, we can go and scout players like Liao and, and all these other people because we've spent a lot of money on attackers and I don't want to go this season and overpay for attackers when we have the option to get an experienced attacker. Do you feel like... Do you feel like hmm? Yeah, let me ask you a question. What's the difference between... like Obviously, one of the things that I heard you speak about when Jesus was coming in is the relationship with, with Arteta and you know how that obviously... One is a draw that helps you win the race for the player, but also... Those soft facts will get more out of the player. Can the same not be said for the relationship between Thomas Tuchel and Aubameyang? Potentially, but we've also seen Aubameyang decline slightly from what he was a couple of years ago to what he is now. Uh, at his back end uh, of his Arsenal career, he was missing clear-cut chances. He wasn't finishing any chances. He wasn't really building up any of the play. And when he went to Barcelona, he was doing well. Yes, he was doing well. But near the, near the end of his time at Barcelona, they found him pretty much useless uh, for, the rest of, for the rest of the games. They, they, they would rather play other players at times. And he, as you said, he might be good to tap in the, uh, tap in the odd goal here and there. But there's going to be moments where you're asking more from your players and he's not going to offer you much more than just somebody 
who comes at the end of chances, maybe takes a couple of penalties here and there. And I feel like he'll, it will be it will be a lot easier for people to turn on him and, and fan base lose patience with with uh, an aging Abamyang who's already has a link to Arsenal. And when they see him coming on wearing a Chelsea shirt with the Arsenal tattoo on his arm, the proper Chelsea fans are not going to be liking that. <laughs> it's not even an Arsenal tattoo. It's, not even, it's just it's just him walking down a tunnel. It's not, it's nothing. It's nothing sentimental about Arsenal. He's fully, he's fully wearing a he's fully wearing the Arsenal kit. With yeah, it's with his family. It's, it's but it's not. It's just him sentimenting his family. It's not him sentimenting Arsenal. It's nothing to do with Arsenal. It's with his family. Stop it. Stop it. Uh, with, with, with Winter Surfer, what are you saying, mate? Awesome oh, yeah, go on, mate. Yeah, go on, mate. Go on. Part, part, you are yeah. Sorry, apologies. Uh, part of the thing for Arsenal fans is the fear that another one of their great players will have a better career at Chelsea. And that's uh, part of me why I wanted him just to wind up Arsenal fans. Um, but I'm not really infused with a Bamiyang signing, um, given how he ended at, ended at Arsenal, really. Um, but what it is, is, is Thomas Tuchel's job to make me understand why he wants him and how he's going to play him. I'm going to give him a chance if he signs, but I think it's a stopgap because of how little the striker market is at the moment in my eyes because I'm not a scout or a DOF, you know, in terms of how what's out there and what's to buy. I think it will, listen, I don't know how much he'll play. Um, sadly, he is an improvement of what we've got there or what's gone because of how poor the attack has been. And that's on Thomas Tuchel as well, to get the best out of the attack. And he's had 18 months. You can, and I, Matt, I know I, we agree on a lot of stuff, but to say they're not his players, I mean, I think that's a cop-out, really, if someone's been there like 18 months or something like that, they are his players, you know. I'm not giving so, him an excuse. I'm just, I'm not, I'm not giving him an excuse. Like listen, I know we like to protect Thomas Tuchel, um, but we need to also understand he's had 18 months with these guys. Um, I'm glad now we, we're getting rid of them. I'm glad Werner's gone because now it will it will mean that Havertz hasn't got a lightning rod or a safety blanket to protect him now that Werner's gone. He needs to step up. And that's right. Everyone everyone seems to forget he scored this roughly the same amount of goals as Timo Werner. So we need to improve the attack we have with Sterling. Even if Bamian comes in, I would like another attacker because I just don't think the attack is strong enough or is the conversion rate not good enough. I mean, we did we scored 76 league goals. I don't know how last season. But if we get another person who is good, then I think that will improve our, our league standard. It won't, we won't challenge this season, but I think it's more like to get as much as we can this season and then, get, and then spend little or spend as much on one or two positions next season. But Aubameyang coming in, I'm fifty-fifty. I really am. Uh, it's gonna, it's one of those. You, you're going to have to make yeah. me believe why you bought him and how you're going to use him. That's I hate, what I, I want to see. Harry, yeah. Let me just say this quickly. Go, on, mate. Thirty-three-year-old Abamyang leaves Barcelona, joins Chelsea. He will be there for the first year. For the first five months or to to a year, he might do he might do decent. But near the end of the year, you'll find Abamyang struggling to get game time. Kai, you'll be you'll be shouting for Kai Havertz or anybody else or Broja to play over him. At this moment in time, I think Chelsea are better off playing Broja or giving somebody else a chance in that in that number nine role than Abamyang. And I think if you guys do sign Abamyang, do it because it will help us get top four. I generally think he'll be absolutely terrible for you guys. And and the oh, growing. Man. And the, and and from the beginning, he might bag a couple goals here and there, and you'll think you'll have a great striker. But he has, from his back end of Arsenal, I can tell you right now, and from the back end of his time at Barcelona, I can tell you right now that I feel like this is a disaster waiting to happen. And you will come back to this video and you'll say, you know what, Egal, you were right. I know what the fear is. is. Yeah, we don't really want him. I have no fear. I have no fear. The only it's thing the I don't want to happen is no. Chelsea to pay money for this. No. No. Because no. from a business why standpoint, do you care? why do you care what we spend from a our business money standpoint? Yeah. To spend money. From a business standpoint, yeah. I'm pissed off that Barcelona might be getting money from a player that we gave to them for free and paid off. That's it, isn't it? Because you didn't get anything for him. You're pissed. You don't care what we spend our yeah, money yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. No, I think he's going to flop at Chelsea, but that has That's nothing fine. to do with it. The theory the is up here. At Arsenal is different no, to the Chelsea no. performance. I generally is. I know it is a gal. I know it is a gal. It's the fear of him. It's the fear of him with a picture lifted up. It's the fear of him succeeding. With that tattoo show. Exactly. That's what the fear is. He's going to have him lifting the trophy. This is going to absolutely flop. 
He's going to absolutely flop. And don't forget, Willian was your player of the season before he joined Arsenal. But he then absolutely flopped at Arsenal. There's nothing to say that this could go either way. Right now, this is a prediction. My prediction is Aubameyang will maybe do well for the first couple of games, get a, do, a score a couple of goals here and there, do a backflip. Next thing you know, Chelsea fans are cheering for him. And then quickly you'll be shouting for Broja or Kai Havertz or anybody else that you have in your attack to play over him. And well, that's, yourself, why, that's why I keep you'll, saying you'll be saying to yourself, You'll be saying to yourself, your front three doesn't work. He doesn't, actually win, he doesn't actually win any headers. He can't get to the end of any crosses at this moment in time. He's lost a burst of pace. He's unable to even uh, get in the right positions. And you're going to find yourself in the same situation that we found ourselves before he got, before he got dropped back in January. Well, we're not going to play him at left wing back for starters. Uh, second of all, um, you never know with Tuchel. Tuchel did want to sign. <laughs> that serious. Did want to sign <laughs> really? as wing back. That's but uh, that's why I said to you, it's very important to see how he's used tactically, right? It's very. Does he come in like off the bench? Because because remember, everyone keeps forgetting for, after that international break in September, the big clubs are playing free every three to four days in different competitions, right? It's it's a madness up until the World Cup. The yeah. bigger the squad, the better is. He might listen. He might come in, score two goals. I prefer to give Broha a chance, but it doesn't mean that we can, we can't still add to the squad. We need a bigger squad I, I, for this season. We need a big squad. I, I hear you guys.